Number 10, Florence Pugh. As we know, the Hollywood it girl appears in Olivia Wilde's new film, Don't Worry Darling, alongside Harry Styles. However, there was reportedly much tension on the set between the two women. Florence reportedly wasn't too happy seeing her director hooking up with Harry, considering the fact that at the time she was still with Jason Sudeikis, whom she is very good friends with. So it makes sense that she wouldn't be too happy seeing the two of them together when Jason was allegedly oblivious to the affair on set and even brought their two young children to visit their mother. But what was Harry's role in all of this? Well, not a whole lot, but it's pretty apparent that Florence disapproves of his new romance with Olivia Wilde. During the premiere of Don't Worry Darling at the Venice Film Festival, fans noticed that the actress avoided both Harry and Olivia like the plague. She posed for group shots with the entire cast, but did not get any photos alone with Harry, even though they were both central characters and love interests in the film. Florence also was said to have avoided eye contact with both of them throughout the premiere and seemed to leave the event as soon as possible. So with everything that went down, it's highly unlikely they'll be working together again in the future. If you're loving this video so far, please hit that like button, it would really help us out. Number 9, Shia LaBeouf. The actor was initially cast as Jack in Don't Worry Darling, but in September of 2020, it was announced that he would be replaced by Harry Styles. Olivia then made some very explosive comments alleging that she fired Shia due to a no a-hole policy that she has while directing. She told Variety, Shia's process was not conducive to the ethos that I demanded my productions. He has a process that in some ways seems to require a combative energy, and I don't personally believe that is conducive to the best performances. Ultimately, my responsibility is to the production and to the cast to protect them. But Shia was not very happy with this side of the story and decided to publicly expose Olivia. He emailed both the director and Variety to deny that he was fired, instead saying, you and I both know the reasons for my exit. I quit your film because your actors and I couldn't find time to rehearse. And he proceeded to leak a video of Olivia begging him to stay in the film. Shia seemed to want to set the record straight but some fans accused him of being bitter and resentful over the fact that Harry ended up replacing him in the film. It sounds like a bit of a reach but that could be a possibility. Number 8 Zayn Malik In a moment of honesty, the 29 year old opened up to US Weekly and revealed the reality of his relationship with Harry, admitting that the two of them barely spoke while they were in One Direction, let alone since. Zayn said, to be honest, I never really spoke to Harry even when I was in the band, so I didn't really expect that much of a relationship with him and I haven't had one. Sometime later, possibly in a response to Zayn's comments, Harry appeared on SNL and dragged Zayn during his opening monologue. He said, I was in a band called One Direction. How crazy would it be if they were here tonight? I love those guys. They're my brothers, Niall, Liam, Louie, and Ringo. If you didn't catch that, he was implying that Zayn was a less important member of the group, as many Beatles fans see Ringo Starr as the least talented and least interesting person in the band. So what was his reaction? Well, a source close to the star told Hollywood Life that Zayn doesn't care what his former band member does or says, and that he'd rather not see his name in a headline with Harry ever again. But the whole thing was hardly a surprise to fans given that the two of them weren't exactly best friends, they were more like co-workers. At number 7 we have London based blogger and chef Tess Ward. Tess gained a reputation in the food industry but her fame skyrocketed once she was publicly linked to Harry. Tessa graduated from the University of Leeds before she enrolled at Lee Cordon Bleu and received her professional chef degree. Following this Tess published a cookbook titled The Naked Diet, where she discussed the celebration of unprocessed naked ingredients. According to a world exclusive dish from Bazaar, Harry and Tess were introduced through mutual friends. Tess would later be photographed with Harry cruising around North London in his Audi at the time. However, as for the same source, Tess broke it off with the musician because she apparently still had feelings for her ex. Number 6 Liam Payne Twitter fans ridiculed Liam for airing the dirty laundry of his former 1D bandmates on Logan Paul's impulsive podcast. The 29 year old reflected reflected on the band's highs and lows, as well as the various feuds within the group and their personal problems in recent years. But fans took particular issue with the fact that he said his 2017 debut solo track, Strip That Down, outsold everyone else in the band. In fact, the whole interview came off as a little bit of a humble brag for Liam, and a lot of people were confused how he seemingly thought that he was the most successful member of the band. Liam also claimed that he was the chosen leader of One Direction, and disputed the notion that Harry was a frontman of the group. He insisted that the band was formed around him as a part of a promise that Simon had made to him two years prior. He explained that when he auditioned for X Factor the second time, he was thrown into the group and Simon promised to make it work for him and allegedly decided that Liam was to be the band's leader. But fans were very skeptical 
of the claim and even Lizzo said, I don't know who lied to that poor boy, but he was not the front man. So it looks like the question is still up for debate. At number five, we have Taylor Swift. Now, as messy as all her previous breakups are, this one is surely no different. In a formal April Vanity Fair issue, Taylor opened up about the details of her then recent breakup with the former 1D boy Bander. Only 23 years old at the time, Taylor explained how she was not the typically clingy, insane, desperate girlfriend that a lot of her exes painted her out to be. She even heavily implied that Harry pursued her and later claimed Harry wore her down into agreeing to finally date. It wasn't long before Taylor said she witnessed a photograph of Harry locking lips with a friend, resulting in Taylor supposedly breaking it off until Harry convinced her to get back together. According to Harry's rep at the time though, Taylor's claims about Harry's supposed wandering eyes are quote undeniably false. And despite their separation being a rocky one, Harry only gave positive remarks about Taylor's Brit Awards performance in February, deeming it a great act. Unfortunately, in an event that didn't look too good on Taylor, she was later pictured filming her 22 track music video where she was said to be imitating Harry by dressing up like him. While fans remained devastated of the pairing separation, the actual reason behind it was again never disclosed. Reportedly though, a handful of Taylor's 1989 songs from 2014 are about the musician, and she more recently admitted to Elle during an interview that she experiences bouts of anxiety as per song lyrics. Number 4 Billy Porter Not everyone was happy to see Harry Styles gracing the cover of Vogue in 2020 while wearing a dress. In fact, actor and director Billy Porter felt that Harry was just copying him. In an interview with the Sunday Times, Porter slammed Harry's gender expression as performative. Quote, he doesn't care, he's just doing it because it's the thing to do. This is politics for me, this is my life. I had to fight my entire life to get to the place where I could wear a dress to the Oscars. All he had to do is be white and straight. Porter went on to say, I changed the whole game. I personally changed the whole game. And that is not ego, that is just fact. I was the first one doing it and now everybody's doing it. I created the conversation and yet Vogue still put Harry Styles in a dress on their cover for the first time. It's easy to see where Porter is coming from considering that yes, he has spent years making waves in the gender fluid fashion world and famously arrived at the 2019 Oscars in a Christian Siriano blazer dress, which kind of broke the internet at the time. But he also wasn't the first and only celebrity to ever push the envelope of gender binaries. So Harry shouldn't have been the target of his criticism. At number three, we have the second half of former band members Harry would rather not be involved with. And that's Mr. Strip That Down, Liam Payne. When the latter shared information that there was a potential reunion in store for all of their once core dominating English band, Liam made sure to vocalize that Harry didn't seem to want to be a part of it. When he discussed everyone's initial interest, it was delivered candidly on a Tuesday for Cyrus XM's hit One Morning mashup. He made predictions as to why why it would be difficult for a reunion between them and Harry, specifically because Liam described not speaking to Harry in a long time, so he wouldn't know where his mind is at for a reunion. Quote, I haven't spoken with Harry in a while, so I don't know where his head's at with that. I heard he mentioned it in some sort of magazine thing or whatever the other day, which was cool, but I think everybody else has been really outspoken and I think that they're ready to go whenever. Harry himself had also briefly touched on the topic of the highly anticipated One Direction revisit during his September Rolling Stone feature, where he shared his sole focus on his career, but not being opposed to return to the band should the timing work itself out accordingly. Number 2 Lucius The American indie pop band did not hold back at all when they accused Harry Styles of not properly crediting them after they collaborated with the pop star on his 2019 song Treat People With Kindness. In an interview with the LA Times, the two lead vocalists, Jess Wolfe and Holly Lasig, said that Harry asked for their vocals on the song because they were already working on another song together at the time. Quote, we were like, yeah, of course, it's just oohs and ahs, it's not a big deal, and it's a good opportunity for us. But we started singing, and we were singing the whole chorus. Two weeks later, they sent us the track, and it was literally us. We started the song, we sing every chorus, just us. We trade off in the bridge, it's us and Harry Styles. The women maintain that Harry didn't even link their band when he put the song on Spotify, which they claimed robbed them of critical exposure that they needed as a relatively unknown band. Quote, it just hurt. There was an opportunity to spread the love a little bit, which he purports to do all the time, and it could have really helped us. 
While the situation does sound disheartening, it might not have been something that Harry did knowingly or maliciously. And coming in at number one, Candace Owens. A lot of people had a lot to say in 2020 when Harry Styles made history as the first male to have a solo cover of Vogue and just happened to be wearing a dress. To no one's surprise, the controversial conservative commentator did not approve of his clothing choice at all. And so she decided to attack him on Twitter, saying, there is no society that can survive without strong men. The East knows this. In the West, the steady feminization of our men at the same time that Marxism is being taught to our children is not a coincidence. It is an outright attack. Bring back manly men. She caught a lot of backlash for her comments and people were quick to call her out for being photographed wearing a suit and flooded her comment section with phrases like, bring back feminine women. In response to this, Olivia Wilde called Candace pathetic for basically attacking Harry's gender expression and conflating wearing a dress with being feminine. Then in response to that tweet, Candace hit back at Olivia tweeting, you're single for a reason, referencing her split from longtime partner Jason Sudeikis, which was announced just days earlier. But regardless of how many people stood up for Harry, it's pretty clear that he just doesn't like labels, especially when it comes to gendered fashion. At number 10, we have Harry's current girlfriend, Olivia Wilde's ex, Jason Sudeikis. Harry has been wishing for no hard feelings with Jason for as long as he's been trying to navigate the fairly new waters of his relationship with the actress. At this point, everybody should know that Harry does prefer to live a pretty low-key life, which is why he's been keeping his relations with Olivia on the deal. Still, he has also hinted that he absolutely does not want to flaunt their romance to taunt Jason in any way. The awaited public confirmation of their relationship has resurfaced because Harry will be hitting the big screen to star in Olivia's upcoming directorial film, Don't Worry Darling. The couple first sparked dating rumors after their attendance at Harry's agent's wedding on January 3rd in California. Since then, the two were also captured arriving at Harry's LA home with their luggage in tow. When the relationship hit the media, Olivia had freshly split with Jason, with whom she was engaged with for seven years and birthed two children with during that time. Their reunion happened one day after Olivia and Harry's wedding date when the co-parents reportedly chatted outside Jason's home. That day marked the first day that the exes were photographed together since Harry and Olivia became an item. At number 9 we have late Love Island host Carolyn Flack, who formerly dated Harry back when he was only 17 and she was 32, making her 15 years older than the star. Around the time of their publicized breakup, Harry issued a Twitter message for his fans to confirm he was single, but went on to deny their split being one-sided. In it he wrote, please know I did and dump Caroline, this was a mutual decision. Oppositely, Caroline, who hosted the backstage coverage for National Television Awards back then, was evidently silent about their split. She instead tweeted about the great night she had before complaining about her next day hangover. Their relationship broke prior to Wendy heading to the US for their awaited tour. At number 8, we have another ex of Harry who just may not be a fan of him even to this day. Camille Rowe dated the singer from July 2017 to the following summer. When the French model and Harry parted ways, there were tons of speculation surrounding them about the reasons behind their breakup. Apparently a number of songs off Harry's Fine Line album from 2019 are inspired by Camille, with some even saying that Falling is a song Harry penned for her. Due to this, fans have theorized that Harry must have cheated on the model, resulting in their split. If this rumor were true, it would make sense why Camille is deemed as one of his famous ex-girlfriends who potentially hates him the most. However, this cannot be officially taken seriously because neither of the two stars ever directly spoke about their time together. Still, Harry did once reveal to Rolling Stone that his music is normally behind the points of his love life. Quote, It's not like I ever sat and done an interview and said, so I was in a relationship and this is what happened. Because for me, music is where I let that cross over. Number 7, Mark Wahlberg. This one was one of the most unlikely celebrity feuds in the history of celebrity feuds. In 2014, Mark Wahlberg appeared on Conan and revealed that his daughter's obsession with One Direction infuriated him, so much so that he threatened to beat Harry Styles up. It's pretty clear that the actor was never a fan of the singer to begin with and told Conan that his two little girls would rather talk about One Direction than their dad's movies. Quote, my four-year-old's going, Daddy, I like Harry, and I'm like, well, I'm gonna punch Harry in the nose when I see him. She pulls out pictures of him and she's hiding pictures in the room, and I pretend I'm ripping them up and I get jealous. But if I see that little prick, he's gonna get it. 
insinuating that if Harry didn't watch out, he was going to risk getting a black eye or two. Mark also discussed a plan to have One Direction do a song for one of his movies, only to lure them in so that he could basically beat the crap out of them. Quote, I could say, hey, I really want to meet One Direction. I'm a big fan. Maybe you can do the title track for the song, and then I would beat the crap out of them in a video. Of course, it seemed like he was just messing around or being sarcastic, but it was a little odd how long he kept the joke going. At number six, we have supermodel Kendall Jenner and her three month fling with Harry. A Hollywood Life exclusive covered their breakup story online, and apparently, Harry was never in it for the long haul. Despite media photos confirming what looked to be great chemistry between the two, over a November dinner date in 2013, and PDA filled dates and worldwide trips being reported shortly after, the source disclosed that Harry was aware from the start that their love affairs would be brief. Considering the busy positions they were both in at the time, with Harry set to do a stadium tour with his former band that began in April and ran until early October, and Kendall with her budding modeling career, their short lived encounter made sense. With that, apparently one of them reportedly walked away with a bit more of an empty heart though, and it definitely was not Harry. However, the musician seemed to have enjoyed the fleeting time he did share with Kendall and their spoon worthy global trotting dates. The HL Insider further detailed that their future with one another was up in the air at one point in time, due to their working commitments being the end of their romance, it can also attest to why they're cordial to this day. When Kendall hosted Dame Corden's show in place of the OG host a while back, she and guest star Harry played the infamous game series Spill or Fill Your Guts. During this, Kendall inquired which of Harry's songs were about her, and he chose to deny the questions and fill his mouth with cod liquids. However, fans have it all thought out that they know which songs are about the model. Either way, despite their history, they remain friends, and that is applaudable for sure. However, who knows if they'll actually ever work together. Number 5. Noel Gallagher The English singer and songwriter who is a a member of the band Oasis has a long history of questioning other artists' musical abilities. But Noel Gallagher made a whole lot of enemies when he decided to trash Harry Styles. In fact, he hated Harry even when he was in One Direction, and decided to go on record calling the band members something that rhymes with rock suckers, and said that they would all be in rehab by the time they're 30. Not only that, but he told the Daily Star that X Factor as an institution has nothing to do with music whatsoever, and that performers and bands that came from the show don't work as hard as real musicians. Quote, you're not telling me that Harry Styles is currently sitting in a room somewhere writing a song. With any joy, he'll be surrounded by a lot of girls. I can assure you he's not got an acoustic guitar out trying to write a middle eight for something. Noel also claimed that his cat could have written Harry's debut single, Sign of the Times, in about 10 minutes. The singer has also trashed Little Mix and said that they were not in the same league as his own band. But clearly, he doesn't take into account the size of a fan base either. At number four, we have another former One Direction member who takes the first of two spots on today's countdown. Notably, ever since Zayn and Harry's group was announced for an indefinite hiatus, they've been busy dropping a range of solo projects and other works on their own. Zayn, one of the five previous members who left the band back in 2015, has been pretty candid about his reasons for departing with his groupmates. He and Harry share the same sentiment in a way of wanting to produce music that felt more like themselves. However, this is where their similarities end, because despite the men being vocal about supporting each other's careers, a single US Weekly interview with Zayn basically threw all talks of the group's reunion as a fivesome out the window. In it, Zayn explained how aside from their band still being on cordial speaking terms, they're obviously not nearly as intimate, and he mentioned Harry directly. According to the former band member, he never actually spoke with Harry in that way, so he knew there was no hope for a long lasting relationship outside of their group. However, not looking at Zayn's confessions, dismissing any bad blood feuds, most fans weren't really as shocked as they should have been realistically when looking at the bigger picture. Still silent back and forth jabs between Harry and Zayn's years long ex-girlfriend Gigi Hadid, that of course could be chalked up as coincidences, probably helped play a part in fans theories. Yeah. Number 3. Taj Jackson Michael Jackson's nephew was fuming when Rolling Stone UK tweeted out the cover of their November issue which featured Harry Styles. The singer was pictured rocking a white first stole and pink sequin shorts while holding a birthday cake with lit candles, and the title reading, Harry Styles, How the New King of Pop Set the Music World Aflame. It's safe to say that this didn't go over too well with Taj Jackson, who immediately took to the comments to roast the magazine and demand a different title for Harry. He wrote, There is no new king of pop. You don't own the title, Rolling Stone, and you didn't earn it. My uncle did. Decades of dedication and sacrifice. The title has been retired. 
The 49 year old is the eldest child of Michael Jackson's brother Taito, and although he insisted that he wasn't disrespecting Harry, his 180,000 followers seemed to be out for blood and started joining in on the hate train against him. One user wrote, Harry is like every other pop star, a Michael Jackson wannabe that will never be anywhere near as good or as talented as the real king of pop. Then Taj doubled down on his feelings and wrote, There is only one king of pop and no offense intended to Harry Styles, but he's not in the same league or universe as Michael Jackson. Wow. At number two, we have former X Factor judge and group producer Simon Cowell. Now, Simon was on the show when Harry Styles was being formed as the next up and coming hottest boy band. In fact, he even bunched them together originally on the show following their X Factor UK third place final ranking. But Harry says the gifts he received from Simon weren't so merry and bright. Rather, he quipped to Chris Evans during a Radio 2 interview that Simon apparently gave him an anxiety problem. At the time, Harry was promoting the release of his long awaited solo album alongside his buddy Nick Grimshaw. Nick had grilled the watermelon sugar artist on the debate of whether or not Two Ghosts was about Taylor Swift and missed fan suspicions. And in response, Harry gave us a non committal answer of, I think it's pretty self explanatory. Some things change and you can do all the same things, and sometimes it's just different. At number one, we have 26 year old Midsommar actress Florence Pugh. Florence will be hitting the big screens once more to star opposite the world's favorite pop heartthrob in his girlfriend's upcoming psychological thriller. Olivia Wilde is directing Don't Worry Darling and has cast Florence as the female lead and Harry as her partner. However, the artistry of the movie has seemingly been tainted by the attention-grabbing, racy, intimate oral scene between the two stars in the trailer for the film. When Florence discussed why this bothered her, it was with Harper's Bazaar, where she expressed her opinions on the ideas she has since received major backlash over. Fans anxiously bit their nails in anticipation for Florence and Harry's obviously steamy bed scene, but the slightly younger Brit decided to address the commotion over the sexual scene she shares with Harry as per the trailer's major. Drop. After she got that part off her chest, Florence ventured into a more positive topic of discussion, like her love for her character. Quote, I love playing a distressed woman. I guess all my movies have that element of women being forced into a corner, forced into an opinion, forced into a way of life. And then finally, something cracks. In regards to the film itself, she told Vogue that it is really sexy in a grown up way, and she hopes her audience will realize how rarely they see female hunger, and specifically this type of female pleasure. Other appearances from stars like Gemma Chan, Kiki Lane, Nikki Kroll and Chris Pine are set to hit theaters on September 23rd of this year.